So first of all, hello everyone and welcome to our webinar on tips to reduce shipping costs. My name is Leora and I head product marketing for the Freitos Marketplace and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. Uh, so just a quick overview of the agenda. Uh, after this brief introduction, after this brief introduction, we will jump right into why you're here. I will introduce you to Phil, who will walk you through his industry certified tips for reducing shipping costs. Um, in the email, we mentioned five, but we uh, threw in a few extra for good luck. Uh, after that, we'll do a Q&A session, and then we'll close with a nice little bonus for all you participants, so definitely stay tuned to the end. Uh, a note on the questions, which I mentioned a couple of times for those who came early, you can submit questions throughout the webinar through the questions tab on the dashboard. Uh, we'll answer as many as we can, and we'll email those we missed with responses after the webinar. Um, also, as I mentioned, sometimes the uh, questions tab gets hidden, so you can just, uh, there's an orange button that I believe will bring it back um, if there's there's a problem. So, uh, okay, let's get started. Uh, just a quick word on Fredos. I won't talk about it in too great length because you are all, of course, familiar with the platform already. But for those who maybe haven't poked around as much as others, uh, Fredos is all about smoother shipping. We are a one-stop shop for all of your freight and importing needs. If you've ever booked a plane ticket with Priceline uh, or a hotel room with Hotels.com, then you'll get it when we say we're the Priceline for freight, essentially. Uh, in fact, the former CFO of Priceline is actually an investor in Fredos, so the comparison really holds. Uh, we offer one place to search for freight quotes, compare the best rates among multiple top forwarders, book your shipment, upload all your relevant paperwork, and manage your shipment. Uh, we even have real people available through live chat to help you at any point in the process. And everything is online and immediate, really, every step. Uh, our quotes are transparent, so you don't have to worry about hidden charges. We have helpful guides and tools throughout the site to offer key information about freight and shipping, because we know it can be a confusing process, and we really just want to make it simpler. Uh, and we guarantee great service. Oh, here's uh, some slides for the <laughs> mark of the marketplace. Um, and we guarantee great service <laughs> in large part due to our great forwarders. And for that, we can thank our senior director of forwarder development and today's featured speaker, Philip von Mecklenburg Blumenthal. Uh, we weren't kidding in the emails when we said that Phil was a freight expert. Uh, Phil came to Freydos with over a decade of experience in the industry, mostly from D.B. Schenker, uh, which I'm sure some of you know is a top five global forwarder. It's one of the largest and most reputable logistics providers in the world. Uh, and who better to give advice on importing costs than someone who literally wrote their PhD on the subject, specifically on hedging ocean freight rates with financial derivatives in the container market. But we can just leave that as ways to reduce shipping costs. So without further ado, I will introduce Phil. All right. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me, Laura? Yes. Perfect. Very good. So hello, everyone, uh, shippers and everyone else who's interested in listening in. Um, so do you also hate throwing milk away because it turned bad? Um, you haven't used it all? Um, and uh, that's basically the start of actually logistics. Um, and that's the start of something called the bullwhip effect. So same as you're not using all your products in your fridge, uh, the supermarket does the same and so does the dairy farm. So in the chart, what we have there is that you see that half a gallon can whip up to much larger amounts that are closer to the production. And that makes products very expensive. And this is logistics, and it sounds complicated, but it will get down to pennies that you have on your in your pocket uh, when looking at logistics spend. So my our first advice uh, is basically that you plan with your customer demands, um, but the customer uh, that you basically give them incentives for meeting a demand, uh, give them a discount for a regular order. You can plan logistics ahead. For example, um, a lot of our shippers and a lot of people who are actually in this uh, webinar here, um, they are Amazon, sellers on Amazon. Um, and I'm not sure if you know, but um, Amazon offers an inventory health report um, to manage the stock level. And when you use this, you can plan ahead uh, your shipping, um, meaning you can reduce the amount of air freight that you have. You can allocate and combine 
um, uh, shipments to fill an entire container. So you will not only reduce the cost of overstock um, or out of stock situation, which is terrible, but also your logistics spend. Um, so let's focus a little bit um, uh, after this about where you actually keep your stock. So plan ahead is the first step of reducing your logistics spend. So building uh, low value and uh, high demand stock is a very important piece in when selling, especially to the US market. Um, so those of your goods that are in high demand are certainly optimal to keep them close to who, uh, who actually needs it. Um, that's why, for example, milk is sold at every corner store and not only downtown areas where people are going to. Then reverse those items that are ordered very seldom are to be kept central. And you see a little bit of the chart here where I'm going to is that um, as we learned before, that the stock is not, up, uh, not only opportunity to create revenue, but stock can also mean cost. So to cost, this cost obviously goes up the more the goods, goods cost, the more the value, the higher the value of the goods is. So keep the higher value goods in your central vault um, somewhere centrally and make the lower value good ones readily accessible for your customers. So you see in this chart, the higher turnover, the lower value, keep it close to the customer. The lower turnover, the higher value, keep them centrally. Most of the logistics provider that participate in the freighters marketplace that we list on our homepage have warehousing opportunities around the country and are certainly helpful to arrange for uh, those possibilities. You don't need an own warehouse to keep your, if you keep your, um, your stock uh, ordered. You can use logistics providers um, or the Amazon services if you're an Amazon seller. By the way, ocean transportation is actually also a cheap storage. So if you plan ahead well, what you can do, you can use the ocean transportation as a storage while it is on the way. It is very cheap, you don't pay for it because uh, it is a, you, you also pay, already pay it by means of transportation. What you neither want to, stay, uh, want to store, not to pay for, is transportation, uh, is air of transportation. So let's look at how you can reduce your logistics spend further by optimizing your uh, packaging. In these pictures, which we've pointed here, you see how, for example, IKEA reduced transportation costs on very simple products, on candles. So the, or, uh, and, and you see here that they reduced the packaging size, and this is the air that they transported very simply, or, for example, in sporting shoes. So our advice is, don't transport air. It has no value. If you want to, uh, if you want to present your product in a more voluminous package, talk to your uh, packaging company uh, that is close to you and see if you can repackage it uh, before you send it to the customers. During the transportation, the most important part of your goods, uh, and, and the question is how they're wrapped, is to prevent damage. So at number four, let's look at this component of how you prevent uh, damage during the goods. So damage always can uh, occur and don't expect much from your forwarder if your goods never arrived or are damaged during the transportation. You will often get uh, up to or even less um, uh, $2 per kilogram if these goods are lost or if they're damaged. So cover your losses with cargo insurance. The sellers on the Freighters Marketplace um, uh, are selling the insurances at very affordable rates between 0.5 and 0.75% of the goods values. It's always a good idea to insure your goods. However, if something goes wrong, make sure that you really request all documentation and hold the parties that you contracted with uh, accountable. You want to see the proof of delivery you want to see any remarks that are um, uh, that were done on the pickup order uh, at origin, at the delivery notes along the transportation chain, and then <clears throat> which documents um, has how many pieces uh, noted and which conditions they have been handed over. You need this documentation, so request it if anything goes wrong. However, always stay covered and go with an, uh, go with the cargo insurance. 
Similar to insurance, let's uh, come to the next part is the customs bond. The customs bond is something a lot of people ask us about. Um, and and it, it gets, especially in the US, uh, quite, quite tricky. Specifically, we want to touch you a little bit on, a, uh, on the bonds itself. In order to import goods into the US, you need such a customs bond. There's a general rule that you can say that if you're importing more than five times a year, you're saving by buying an annual customs bond. So five times a year of importing is a general rule of thumb that you can take for uh, buying an annual bond versus a single entry bond. And each of the Freitas Marketplace seller is happy to provide this to you and sell this to you at, at rather affordable rates. You also save on fees for ISF bonds if you're importing with ocean freight when you buy an international, uh, when you buy an annual bond. So think about how often you're importing and then go for a single entry or for a customs bond. And uh, second advice, have you ever wondered how many duties uh, you have to pay? Um, what we've developed is uh, we've developed a, a duty estimator uh, on our homepage. So just select from the thousands of customs tariffs the goods that you import, enter the value, and within seconds you know what you pay. Um, on our homepage at Freitos, you can find uh, this customs duty estimator from um, any country in the world into the US for any goods that are imported to the US. So let's uh, look a little bit about another segment where you can evaluate if uh, what is good for you, uh, buying air or ocean. Um, so um, we are sure a lot of you saw our advice in the past days on our email about the matter, uh, but that's because this decision is a very, very important one. We want to that we want to we want you to be very sure um, that you know when you buy air or when you buy ocean. Up here, you see a pretty cool chart that determines, as a general rule, when to use air freight or when to use ocean. Um, same as uh, with uh, with a store. The higher goods value uh, or the lower uh, the air freight cost, use a speedier mode. Um, so otherwise, just slow down, uh, go for ocean. Um, obviously, urgency is, a, is a, another determinator. So um, think about uh, the goods value uh, and how much the costs are uh, before uh, deciding for one product. Um, on our platform, on freighters.com, you can check this within 10 seconds, um, what the cost for air and what the cost for ocean freight is, and then compare it to the goods value that you have and how long they are underway. We also post all the timelines, uh, the transit times. And if you're shipping multiple LCL shipments a month, multiple shipments a month that do not fill an entire container, Check if you're able to combine them at a full container. Even if the full container is only packed at like 75%, um, sometimes it's even cheaper to get a full container. You also reduce the damage um, by having you your goods packed with other goods in the same container. So on our platform, you can play around with the prices from different origins, uh, door to door, and check out um, the different the different rates to come to a great um, great solution for yourself. What lots of forwarders will ask you is basically um, uh, what is your incoterm? And independent of air and ocean, you should know your incoterms. And I know they can get bad, they can get very very tricky. The input terms are determined very clearly from where to where you pay the cost um, and to take the risk. Um, and, and, and so um, that, that's something where you can look up in the internet uh, on the word uh, input term. If you put this in, there are cool charts that you can determine on, um, uh, on, on basically which input term to take. Um, so um, after you've determined the Ingo term, you can hop up basically and shop around. Um, 
So what you see here is our uh, is our um, uh, screenshots uh, of the Freight Marketplace. Uh, we encourage you to shop around. Make sure you're not going for the first or the cheapest, but compare your freight for orders. You can compare them easily at ship.freightus.com. Um, there we provide competitive rates within 10 seconds from door China and door UK to any door in the US for air and ocean freight. If you want to know more about freight for water if you work with, check out the, rev the reviews of each for water that we post there. And then the best part, you can actually pay with credit card and wire transfer so that your charges are guaranteed that you don't need to go ahead. So basically, it's smooth shipping uh, is done with Freitos. These were basically the seven tips we had uh, for you for freight for warning. And um, now we have a little bit present uh, for you and open up for, um, uh, for questions. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Phil, for those great suggestions. A lot to learn from that, to be sure. Um, like you said, we're going to open up the floor now to questions. Continue to submit through the, uh, the sidebar. We've already gotten a couple. Um, and I will pass them on to Phil. And Phil uh, is still around. We have uh, plenty of time to answer. So, uh, you know, please any questions about anything that you've seen on the slides, uh, any other questions you've had about freight, you have a freight expert at your disposal, so uh, please pass them on. Um, if anyone's having trouble uh, asking questions, then there's the raise your hand function, so you can do that and I will try to um, uh, see if we can make something work there. Um, so I already have one question in. Um, it came in a couple of times. We do seem to have a couple of Amazon FBA shippers. So um, Phil, a couple of people are wondering if they're selling via Amazon FBA, should they be shipping directly from their supplier to the warehouse? It's been asked a couple of ways, but that seems to be the, the main question there. Yeah, so I mean it's it's a good way to ship directly to the Amazon warehouse. However, you need to be very sure about the quality because Amazon uh, will won't take it lightly if something arrives not not basically uh, in the way um, they would like to receive the goods. Um, so you need if you need if you want to do this, you need to add some quality control on your shipper site. The quality control includes that the labels that Amazon is requiring are added that basically the height, how the goods are stacked are, are, um, are okay, that the packaging that Amazon has required are in the limits that uh, Amazon has. So Amazon provides you with a checklist of items that you need to have ready um, when shipping to an Amazon FBA warehouse. If you want to prevent any fines that you have there or any, any, any returns, you can send it to other service providers, to logistics providers that have a 3PL warehouse. They're usually not that strict with it and can perform services for you um, that are um, that that might uh, that the, your seller uh, your um, seller in overseas in China in India uh, won't have provided. So um, the first thing is check the checklist. Um, maybe next time you're visiting uh, your your seller. Uh, go through this checklist with them. If you're not confident, sell to a, ship it to a third-party warehouse and from there to Amazon. Great. Um, a couple more questions have been coming in. Um, one is um, someone asked about the cost effectiveness between a 20-foot container and a 40-foot container. Yeah, there is a general rule of uh, uh, a general rule in the market. At the, at the moment, the rates are rather low. So for a 20-foot container, you pay around 80% of the rate what you pay for a 40-foot container. Um, so it's it's very often uh, that um, if you can combine goods and uh, you can fill a little bit more than a 20-foot container, um, then uh, then basically uh, it's more efficient to have a 40-foot container. Great. Um, another question came in about Incoterms. Um, just uh, kind of elaborating a little bit more on Incoterms. Uh, if you, as, as she said, you mentioned it a couple of times during the end of your talk, I will chime in and say that when we send in the um, 
when we send in the uh, slides at the end, when we send in the recording of the presentation, I will send a little chart about Inco terms as well. But Phil, if you want to maybe explain very broadly kind of what that means and maybe give a little insight into the three uh, key ones that come up the most in our day. Yes, sure. Eco terms are a very complicated matter, and uh, it's always a question if you mention it or not. Um, so um, the key one you've probably heard about is FOB. Um, it means free on board. Uh, that basically means that uh, your seller provides everything uh, in, on the inland side or the origin side, and you take it from there. Very critical when you have FOB is that when you get the invoice from your fate forwarder, check that there are no port charges at origin. It is very important because free on board means literally free on board. Uh, there shouldn't be any char other charges uh, at origin side, only the ones at destination side. So this is the first one. The second, the second uh, one, uh, a lot of you have, for, especially for smaller shipments, it's X-Works, meaning you pay for everything. You pay for the entire trade from the door of your seller. And then you have something that is um, uh, uh, that can be used in very different um, uh, inco terms. Uh, there was an old one which is now DEU. There is something called DAP, and um, that's something that the seller is sending you everything. The only thing is that basically you pay the customs duties. If it's DDP, it's the delivery duty paid. You don't pay them, but usually you are up, you are paying for the customs duty simply because you're most likely located in the U.S. You are the importer of record for the U.S. customs. So these are the three main uh, inco terms. If you just type in inco terms and go to, on Google and go to images, you see the images, and it's very very easy to understand them there. Great. Um, a lot of great questions coming in, everyone. Um, someone asked, certain states in the U.S. have weight restrictions on their roads. Um, do we, uh, does Fredos limit shipments based on this, or is there any uh, problem about weight restrictions when you're booking freight? Yeah, so um, weight, weight restrictions is, is a new, very hot topic. Um, we're asking you, in, uh, when you book through Fredos, to specify the weight um, of the container, obviously of the goods, but I think the question was more targeted towards uh, the container. Um, based on this, um, um, as most of our, our shipments uh, are within the limits of the weight restrictions, um, we basically allow you to go forward and book uh, the rates. However, um, if, if we find out that, there is a, that you are outside the limits, uh, we will contact you uh, relatively uh, soon with a, within a, um, a matter of a few hours um, and update you, either uh, offer you a different options or offer you a different rate. Very good. Um, another question, a question about customs. Um, someone asked, when should one use a customs broker versus a customs attorney for importing branded goods into the USA? Yes, so, um, sorry, we are like a little chop there. Can you just repeat the question so I really get it? Sure. Uh, when should one use a customs broker versus a customs attorney for importing branded goods into the USA? I, I, I don't know exactly the, the background here. It sounds a little bit um, like it's, a, it's, it's also a, a trademark uh, question. Um, you definitely need a licensed custom, licensed customs broker. Um, this uh, to, to import the goods. The customs broker needs to declare your goods, um, uh, needs to do, perform the customs entry with the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol. Um, so maybe if, if the one who raised this question can send us an email uh, with a little bit more content, we're happy to answer this. Great. Um, okay, it's just sorting through some of the questions to see which ones are popping up the most. Um, someone asked, which I know what the answer to this will be, how long usually does it take to get a rate quote? Yeah, so um, <laughs> the answer is, is uh, it's a fun answer. Um, go to ship.freitas.com, check it out yourself. Usually within 10 seconds uh, you have at least one quote. Um, you usually you have three different forwarders that show up. Um, that is a really good piece of advice. Um, 
And actually, someone asked a follow-up question about Freydos, um, if our prices automatically include the customs broker. Yeah, so when you go to ship.freitas.com, you can select at the moment two additional services. One is customs brokerage and one is insurance. Um, on the insurance piece, it will include the insurance from the specific freight for water um, you select. Um, if you select customs brokerage, the customs entry, basically the brokerage itself, uh, the work will be included. The duties uh, obviously will not be included. This, these are add-on. This is a pure pass-through. Um, on Freitas.com, we have a customs duty estimator. So when you pay Freitas um, on the on the homepage and your charges are guaranteed, also uh, if if everything is specified, um, if everything your shipment is specified, you won't need to pay anything in addition. However, accept the customs duties that come at a later point when the goods arrive uh, in the in the U.S. And a follow-up question to that, approximately how much does a customs broker cost? And if you don't use one, what happens? Well, first of all, you need a customs uh, broker um, or, or at least the forwarder is doing this. You need to be a licensed customs broker in the U.S. Um, if you want to get licensed yourself, obviously you can do the entries yourself. However, if you don't import that much, um, it's usually a little more efficient. Uh, instead of going through all these courses um, and, and the licensing of using a freightful water, uh, which is uh, often cases a, freight, a customs broker or an external customs broker. Um, how much does it cost? Um, it really varies. Uh, usually it, it varies by the amount of commodities uh, that you uh, that you have. Um, so if you import like 10, 20 different commodities, the prices are usually go up. If you only have uh, one commodity, one of the same kind of goods, then um, uh, uh, then basically um, the, 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 it's it's getting it's it's lower. Um, in general, you can say uh, generally you can say that. Um, uh, it's something in the around, in the area um, of around 75 to 100 uh, US dollar for the entry. Okay. All right. So we received two more questions that I'm uh, that I've uh, I'm reading here. Uh, one is basically we do not have a US based company, but we need to send US to the US forwarding. Can we send you directly from Europe and you arrange customs for us? You always need uh, a, a so-called importer of record, uh, and this was uh, need uh, this need to be someone who is based uh, usually in the U.S. Uh, there are ways to arrange it. Um, however, uh, you need to have an importer of record, um, and the importer of record can be either directly your customer. Very often, uh, 3PL customers, uh, 3PL companies, or logistics forwarder companies. Uh, would be willing to do this or customs attorneys. We ourselves, freighters, are not offering these services. However, we are happy to bring you in touch with someone. Okay. Um, are there any further further questions, Laura, that you've received? Yes. We got a couple more. I'm just. I see. I want to just remind everyone. We have something special uh, to announce at the end. So if you want to stay put for a little bit longer, we'll we'll take a, a couple more questions and then we'll wrap up. But I really promise it's worth staying to the end because we are uh, we're giving a little gift as an appreciation. Um, but uh, a very good question uh, also about customs. Someone reported that um, they had goods held up in customs for an X-ray exam. Everything was good after. But what typically prompts your goods to get held? up for inspection? Does it have anything to do with a first shipment um, or anything of that sort? Yeah, I mean the first thing you want to we want to make sure is that uh, the goods you declare uh, are are in line with the harmonized tariff uh, code um, that either your seller has given to you, you have found out, or your customs broker has given to you. Um, U.S. Customs gets very specific uh, about this and curious about what the goods are if they are not really in line. Meaning, if the goods are, let's say, uh, T-shirts made of cotton in a certain color, um, and your goods, uh, the goods description on the commercial invoice say hoverboards or something with uh, any other documents, then it's very likely that they get held up in customs. Um, 
And the second thing then is, is that basically if you're importing the one of the first times and you have goods that are, um, have any other so-called other government agency requirements, meaning for example eyewear, um, which needs requirements from the Food and Drug Administration, if you're importing leather um, that needs some efficient wildlife, um, uh, efficient wildlife uh, licenses or requirements, this is rather likely uh, that you're importing it, uh, that, that, that gets held up. So this is something that is totally out of control, um, out of control of us, out of control of the fall water. Uh, what you can do is be very specific at the very beginning um, and talk to your um, customs broker or we bridge the communication there, uh, but we cannot guarantee that these goods are held up. If they're held up, um, there's a learning from it, and secondly, usually there are costs involved for it, so please be prepared for this. Okay. Um, so there was another question which came in, um, when working with Freitos and the goods arrive here in the United States, is the receiver able to pick up the goods with their own truck to receive the goods? Uh, yes, um, you can determine basically to where the goods are sent and then you can arrange with an own truck or with another forwarder um, the on forward shipments. Just specify exactly to where the goods should be sent um, and then uh, you can arrange with the own, own truck from then onwards. Um, very good. I good, uh, had a good question. Um, will this material be available at the end of the webinar? And the answer is yes, 100%. Um, first of all, is we will share this. I'm going to answer that one, Phil, if that's okay. Um, we will share uh, this. We're going to share the deck that you saw. We're also going to share a recording of the webinar. Um, so yes, all information will be available at the end. Um, yeah, and, and one more information, I think. I've seen a lot of more questions coming in. They were very specific. Um, so uh, please apologize that we haven't raised and we haven't answered every question that came in. And we will take them afterwards and then uh, reply individually. A hundred percent. I did have another good question, though, that I think others might wonder about, about another question about customs, which, like we said, we get a lot of questions about that. Um, certainly an important part of the process. She asked, um, is a good customs broker able to provide updates and help move the process along? So I'll sort of rephrase that as, like, what should one expect from a good um a good customs broker and I'm also going to just before you answer say we only have time for about one or two more questions so if you want to get them in now uh, we're probably going to wrap up soon but I think this customs brokerage question is definitely worthwhile. Yeah, I mean the customs broker, uh, it's it's a little bit like uh, you know working with an attorney. He needs to understand your situation and then needs to understand basically um, uh, what you, what you're aiming to do. So don't hide any information from your customs broker because they have a lot of information. They're doing this day in day out of um, how to declare goods um, exactly um, to U.S. customs. So what you need to do is basically, first of all, provide the information, any documentation that you have um, uh, above the commercial invoice, specifically when your goods are not very easy to understand. Um, usually what customs broker do if they have you have a customer, they check out the, the, uh, the products themselves on home pages, try to get more information. The second thing is what you, what you want to basically do with a customs broker is that you help them to find, if you don't have the right harmonized tariff, um, then uh, basically explain as much as possible so that you come to the exact harmonized tariff code. Um, then stay, stay uh, uh, on top of basically your, your, your transportation. If you haven't heard anything for a while from your customs broker after declaring the invoice, uh, after declaring uh, a U.S. customs, um, then you should check in. Usually a good customs broker is keeping you appraised and updated, not only if having received the documentation from the forwarder, if the forwarder is not the customs broker, but also um, having providing the information back to um, the forwarder or to the trucker who's then arranging the onboard transportation. So a good customs broker in summary is, is, is one who communicates well with you and guides you along the customs process. Great. Um, okay. Um, trying to, we have a couple more questions. Phil, I think we have time for one more. 
Sure, yeah, let's take one more question and then we have this uh, surprise which we're going to open. <laughs> yes. So, um, this is a big question and I think that uh, it's one that we could potentially explore more in the future, but uh, Phil, if you want to give your maybe... It's, the question is, what is the easiest way to master the importation process for a new player? Is, is there some sort of simple checklist that exists for it? Um, I know that I can... Uh, tell you that uh, we certainly on Fredos there's a lot of content that will uh, help you with the importation process but Phil if you have any uh, expert advice that can make that simpler yeah if I wish I had this one advice which helps everything however <clears throat> the first thing is what you usually get confused about is um, which forward or to approach Right? I mean, it's like there are millions out there. So, I mean, it's a little selfish, but go to Freitos and at least you get an indication of what the prices are. You can even pay there directly. The second thing is like you see all these terms of uh, all these different terms um, of, of, of uh, terminology which has been charged to you. Uh, we've just um, issued a blog uh, which explains the most common freight charges on our homepage, which helps you understanding which one are uh, charged by a freight for water, which put a shipping shipping line. So that's usually should help you. Uh, the third one is that um, you communication is everything. When you talk to a freight for water, be very open. Say it's one of your first time you're importing goods. Uh, get a little guidance about it. Um, so these are probably the three items where I'm saying like uh, get a feel for what the charges are, uh, what's coming towards you. Uh, understand the terminology that's in there and talk to your freight for water about trade about uh, transit times about what the best mode is from where to where um, air or ocean and uh, that's usually guides you well along Great. Um, so I'm getting more questions in, but unfortunately that is all we have time for today. So as I mentioned to a couple of you on the site, uh, we will be sure to answer you as best we can offline. Um, but really, thank you all for your participation and your excellent questions. Uh, we knew this would be a popular topic and you did not disappoint. Uh, we, like I mentioned a couple of times, we have recorded the webinar. We will email it to all of you within a couple of business days so that you can refer back at any time. Uh, we're also always available for questions on the site or through email or phone. All of our contact information is on the site on ship.fredos.com. There's that little chat icon. Real people are behind it, I swear. So uh, definitely worthwhile. Uh, I also encourage you all to stay tuned. Um, based on your feedback, um, we're really hoping to make these webinars a more frequent occurrence uh, with plans on maybe one on those hidden, sh hidden shipping charges that seem to be coming up. Uh, maybe we'll try to get that in a month or so. So we'll keep you all posted. And as promised, we have a special treat for all you participants. As a special thank you for joining us, uh, if you've never shipped with Fredos before, we are going to give you $50 off your first shipment with us. Um, along with the presentation, I'm going to send a quick form to get really, really quick feedback on the webinar, um, answer a couple of short questions, and we will take $50 off your first shipment with Fredos. So um, that's as a thank you to all of you. And a, thanks, a huge thanks again to Phil for his great advice. Thanks all of you for joining us, and uh, have a great day.